Hi, my name is Wade Cannon. I'm a paramedic and I'm the lead EMT instructor here at Idaho Medical Academy. Today we're going to be talking about EKGs and EKG placements for the EMT. EKG interpretation is generally a skill provided by paramedics in the world of EMS and takes a large amount of study to learn how to effectively interpret these EKGs and to base your treatments off of them. EMTs are often called upon to obtain a 4-lead or a 12-lead EKG, and having some knowledge of basic EKG principles and methods can help to ensure that our EKGs are being obtained the correct way so that our patients are getting the best possible care. The first thing we're going to talk about is the various equipment needed to obtain an EKG. You will need a cardiac monitor. You will also need either a 3-lead or a 4-lead EKG cable set. Usually these are included with the monitor and they have vastly different uses and we'll talk about those in a moment. You'll also need electrodes. Electrodes are the actual sticky thing that go on the end of the wires when you're obtaining an EKG. Not to be confused with the leads. The leads themselves are the actual wires. And then with every EKG monitor that we have, there is the option to transfer EKGs remotely to hospitals. That way the hospital is better prepared for what we are bringing in to them. Next, we'll talk about the components of what the EKG tracing actually represent. So when we're looking at the heart, when we're taking an EKG, we're looking at the electrical pathways through the heart that cause the hearts to beat. It all starts with the SA node, otherwise known as the sinoatrial node. From there, the electricity will travel down between the atria to a little node called the AV node, otherwise known as the atrioventricular node. This lies, excuse me, lives between the atria and the ventricle. From there, that electrical pathway will work its way down through what's called the bundle of Hiss. After that, it will separate into a left bundle branch and a right bundle branch. From there, those branches will continue around to the left and right side, forming what are called our Purkinje fibers. Let's also talk about what the actual portions of the EKG mean. So the baseline of the EKG is that standard flat electrical line that you will see when you're looking at EKG in person. This is an important piece of knowledge that we have to be aware of because there is something called artifact. Artifact would make it so that that flat, nice, crisp line will kind of be bumpy and it can skew what our EKG is telling us. The next thing we'll notice on the EKG is what is called the P wave. The P wave represents atrial depolarization, or basically when the atria itself is contracting. The next portion we'll talk about is the QRS complex. The QRS complex is what we all think of when we think of an EKG, the big spiky thing in the middle. The QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization, meaning that the ventricle is contracting, sending blood to the rest of the body. And the last little bump we'll talk about is the T wave. T waves represent ventricular repolarization, basically allowing the ventricle enough time to fully open itself back up to prepare to send blood throughout the body once again. Now it's important to note when we're talking about EKG readings is that there is what's called electrical capture and mechanical capture. Now, just because there is some sort of drawing going on this EKG does not necessarily mean that the heart is beating effectively with it. You can tell if an EKG is accurate by finding a pulse, feeling the pulse, and then watching that EKG strip. As that, the waves start to depolarize or you see the contraction marks on the EKG, it's important to note that the heartbeat is actually perfusing and circulating throughout the body. Up next, we're gonna show you how to actually place a four lead EKG as well as a 12 lead EKG. And we'll talk about the breakdown about where each one of those uh, electrodes go. So now we're gonna demonstrate how to put on the four lead EKG as well as the 12 lead EKG. Now there are some considerations you may need to have before we actually put the electrodes on. Let's think about uh, the older generations of males, right? They are gonna have some very hairy chests. They are gonna to need to be shaved for us to get a good tracing, so be ready to do that. And if you are, are having a hard time getting the electrodes to stick to somebody, you can use something like a uh, alcohol prep and clean off the skin prior to putting on the stickers. Now let's start with the four lead. The four lead is gonna be labeled right arm, right leg, left arm, left leg. An easy way to remember it though is white on right. Right arm will be our top corner there. From there, white over green, clouds over grass. Now note that I'm putting them on the trunk here. You can put them on just the arms and legs. 
However, a lot of times as the patient moves, as the road starts to move, you can start to get some artifacts. So typically best practice would be to put them on the torso themselves. Now we've talked about the right side, let's move to the left side. The left arm is going to be the black electrode. The lower left leg is going to be the red electrode, once again on the trunk. Now, I kind of mentioned clouds over grass, so clouds over grass, smoke over fire. That is the easiest way for most people to remember how to do this. That is how we get our basic four lead. Now let's say we need some more information about what's going on with this patient's heart. We'll actually put on the 12 lead now. So from here, we're going to feel down the chest until we get to the fourth intercostal space. And I'm going to be putting V1. Okay, they are labeled in numbered formations, so it is easy to remember which one should go next. From there, on the other side of the sternum, still in that fourth intercostal space, we are going to put V2. Now note that I'm, I'm putting everything on the patient's left and patient's right. So make sure you're, you're distinguishing that. Now, when we're putting on the 12 lead, there is kind of a step you skip, and more so of just the order of events on how we put on leads. So I have V1, V2. I'm actually going to skip V3 and move right into V4. So I'm going to find midclavicular into the fifth intercostal space, and I'm going to stick it right there. Okay. Now, still moving through our numbers, I'm going to skip V5 at this point. V5 will be mid-axillary. So if we were to cut the body in half front to back, that's our line we're looking for. Now that I have V1, 2, 4, and 6 on, the last two are kind of easy. V5 goes in between V4 and V6. V3 will go in between V2 and V4. This will allow us to get a good tracing if we have this all on there correctly. Now, you're gonna need to prompt your patient a little bit. Let them know, please no talking or moving, breathe as normal as you can. Because if they start moving, we once again develop artifact and our readings are gonna be skewed. And that could prompt us to do some inaccurate treatments if we are not on the ball with that. So depending on what kind of monitor your agency uses, you may have to do a couple of different things to obtain your 12 leads. Some 12 leads require you to plug into the four lead cable. Others are completely their own entity there. So just depending on your manufacturer for your uh, EKG monitor, that may change. Now, when we put on the 12 lead EKG, once again, we're gonna tell the patient, no moving, no talking, breathe as normal as they can. But to top that off, we're going to be watching our monitor. The reason being is that from time to time, leads will move, right? People can be sweaty, people can be hairy, leads can not stick for whatever reason. Okay, so you're gonna to have to do, potentially do some troubleshooting. So by putting on all your leads and then checking your monitor, you can ensure that all of the leads are providing you feedback. Um, once again, you can double check because if you put something in the wrong place, you might get a little bit of a weird interpretation. Now, that is primarily at the medic's scope, but we do want your EMT basics to be familiar, at least familiar, with putting on the four lead and 12 lead just to make the whole thing roll seamlessly and integrate our care as best we can so our patient has great outcomes. When we have the 12 lead EKG on, be sure to hit the 12 lead button and print off your strip. Now, as an EMT basic, you might not know what the strip is saying, and that's okay. But what you should make sure is that each lead, each one of the boxes, has the, the drawings going through it or the tracings moving through it. That way, when you hand it to your medic or you transmit it to a hospital, you're making sure you're giving them as mo the most accurate information as you possibly can. So that was a little bit about EKG placement, uh, both the four and the 12 lead EKG. Hopefully this video helped you guys out a little bit. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe, follow our content. We will see you next time. Mm -hmm.